Mbona ijiti aile e konen yama poisa with the things ama light a blue eye and zaganchi ne. Mbona izi ya kichi ime kondigi mbata. You know, you just say pretend normal and if I dumped the wallet, I wouldn't have arrested. Ngebe bang yegile. The thing that took me to 15 years in prison was this wallet of the deceased judge. Gululeko on Culture, hello and welcome to yet another episode. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah, so a few weeks ago we invited to, to visit the local prison. They were opening up a library. Um, and of course, we run a very influential platform, so they wanted us to go and see that um, and be able to engage with the offenders and a few of the ex-offenders as well. One of them is my guest today, Utapelo Musakwane. Um, he wrote a book called From Prison to Pulpit. Uh, today, in this episode, we'll, we'll hear from him um, full story to this, full extent, um, and a lot of other things as well that he's doing at the moment. He was imprisoned or sentenced to 15 years. We'll talk about that too. And, of course, the positive aspects of his life um, as of today. Uh, Tapelo, thank you very much for joining us. How are you? Uh, I'm well, thanks. Butunkulego Gyabonga for the opportunity granted so that I come and uh, tell my story because I think it's extremely important to actually tell our narrative and uh, there's a context to this kind of uh, narrative because if you think about it, no one in their life ever dreamed to become a con, uh, a criminal, someone who is uh, violating the rights of other people, someone who's terrorizing the community. Yeah. I mean, uh, each and everyone had a dream, you know, a dream, especially in the infant stage, in the stage of development as we were toddlers. Uh, we had dreams, aspirations, ambitions to become something in this lifetime. But as we grow up, uh, the choices we make, uh, I recall someone said, uh, when we were born, we looked like our parents, but upon our death, we look like our choices. So, yeah, I've made bad choices. Yeah, that's a profound statement. Um, before we get into everything else, uh, interestingly, uh, when Khaukhelo and I, and you were there as well, um, visited Low Coop and they were opening up their library, uh, introducing books to uh, offenders, uh, I said something, which is obviously you will have a different perspective because you come from that environment. I said, weirdly, I never felt unsafe when I was in there. Um, I want to ask you an interesting question. When you walked in there now as an ex-offender, um, as a member of the public, did you feel any, did, did you have a sense that anything could happen? Uh, was your guard up? Because me and my guard was down all the time. Um, would they... Would they, would they have allowed anyone in that library, in that hall, with as many people that were there at the time, would they have allowed anyone who poses any type of danger, for example? Just how, how do you read those kind of rooms now that you're outside? Yeah, uh, you know, in every prison, especially uh, you look at a low cop, particularly maximum, but this thing slowly but surely it's going away. They are eradicating it, taking it out of... Uh, the prison system, which is the gangsterism. Uh, when I walked in Lyoko for me, I, I was not afraid, but I knew uh, something might happen. Mm -hmm. I know because it happened uh, in the past where people will, were stepping each other in prison and uh, the members of the society end up getting affected, maybe not stepped, but sometimes they might get hurt uh, in one way or another. But nowadays, like I said, gangsterism, it's not something that uh, it's allowed in prison because offenders themselves, prisoners themselves, they are uh, forming those community forums within the prison hall so that they can fight those who are bringing this uh a gangsterism because it's affecting how you do your sentence for instance if uh, 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 we find within that prison let's say Leo or Hunpent or Boxback prison 
uh, gangsterism is practice. A lot of privileges are taken away. You find all the time the prison is locked. You find uh, a visit. You, you don't get visit. You don't get to call people from outside. So prisoners are tired of doing their time under those conditions. Mm -hmm. Hence, they decided to say, no, if Tina, we are not standing up and fight those guys who want us to do our time here horribly and terribly we are going to spend our our present time very hard so uh they do away with that and for me now look i for me now i was even interested uh, looking forward into sharing uh with the offenders the experiences because remember what changed their mind if it was just you putting Kululego with other guys who has no prison experience. Yeah, well, they might say, ah, but Labantu Lababaya is in Tobakulmangai. But when they see us, yes. you know, coming there, it it changes them psychologically because they can see, look, there's life out there. If Tapelo saved his time and went outside and he's surviving without doing crime and he's coming back to share his experiences and his story, then it gives them that hope, that inspiration. Psychologically, they are disarmed for them to uh, uh, pose a threat or do something out of the ordinary. Yeah, because I, I, I was imagining, that's a very uh, refreshing perspective. Um, I was imagining, because people think a lot of things. I knew that I was going to come with the who was a female, um, and then I knew that there, were, there would be other speakers who were authors, were females as well, it's good looking women. And I'm like, hey, it's possible here that there could be a hostage situation. Uh, but as soon as the moment we walked in there, I was like, nah, it, 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 it seems cool. And people were so receptive of us, um, you know. So I, I was happy, man. I was happy. Shout out mm -hmm. to Soli. You know, yeah. I, I want, sorry, I want sure. to even add, uh, you know, an interesting thought because uh, this is how I was born into the Christian faith. Uh, the guy, unfortunately, he went back to his uh, life of crime and mm. he was shot in a crime scene. A guy who spent almost 14 to 15 years in prison Oof. was released 2014. He went to, into prison when he was, I think, 14 or 15, released at the age of 31, 32. Uh, the guy, while we were inside, told me to say, Tapelo, hey, there are ladies that are coming to church. And you must understand, when you talk about ladies in prison, we spend a lot of time without seeing beautiful faces, you know, that body-shaped, curvaceous, and all that. So <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of like interesting for us because you could see the guys, there's a, 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 an interesting way we use with your kezamel, you know, yes, because yes. we always see Amato Dakpela. So now <laughs> it's a different voice, that feminine voice. So for them, like, this is one they like, especially when ladies were talking, I, I could look at the guy because it took me back when I was in their situation in those clothes. You kind of sitting there and just imagining to say, but one day, <laughs> it's one day. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. So shout out to Soli. I remember that he was saying in case I'm, being <laughs> yeah. I'm inviting yeah, beautiful people because I understand like I, 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 my, my understanding of prison is through books yeah, people like Aitin McKenzie when I was 16, 17 I read his book The Choice um, and I got to find out a lot about prison and whether or not that is an environment I would like to go into uh, that book helped me a lot there's a guy called Magadine Wenzel he wrote prison but it was, he wrote number it was literally about the breakdown of the number system um, in prison and then I have um, those I, I read when I was a teenager and then I read other books as well as I was in my 20s uh, from the Americans and all over the world people who spend some time in prison and through them you get to understand what you're saying the psychological effect of having women uh, because Gaten McKenzie says that, that you fantasize about women so much because you've been incarcerated for 10 years mm. that um, even your sex your first sexual intercourse outside of prison uh, is such a a rushed moment because you've been fantasizing uh, mm -hmm. so much about it as well. But anyways, like um, I wanted to ex ask you about that uh, as the first question, um, just that environment, going back to that library and, and how you felt. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you before we go into your life story, uh, I looked at the faces of those men who were there. Mm -hmm. Some of them were outside the window. They were looking. Um, what does imprisonment do to a person? 
um, what does being in a confined space for a prolonged period of time do to a person? A person's psychology, because prisoners develop their own language, their own rules, um, they eat their own food in a routine at 6 a.m. perhaps, and 12 a.m. and 12 midday. They, they have a routine that goes on for 10 years. Um, and sometimes I've read about this, that if you are in solitary confinement in the Americas for six months, you could lose your mind. For three months, you could lose your mind just because you are alone. You are kept alone in a very small cell as well. What does the prison condition in South Africa do to the mind of a young person, a young male person? Uh, yeah, that's a tough question, but I will try to uh, jog my head out of it. Uh, first and foremost, I will say that prison, it's another world of its own. As you have rightly said that it has its own rules and regulations, its own routines, its own a lifestyle of doing things. Uh, a friend of mine, we are renting in the same area or in the same yard. He is a teacher by profession. So this guy always come to my room and say, Tapelo, your room is very clean, man. I said, look, I develop this habit in prison because in prison, five o'clock, your shit must be stretched and you must do the taking, you know, mm -hmm. you must be neat, your head's combed, and you do that every day consistently because mm -hmm. failure to do that, there's a punishment. You know, you might be, see, visa go to bomb, bomb they are taking you to another cell and it's hard to go and start another life into another cell but what prison especially solitary confinement does to a mind i think it does two things first and foremost it is the choices that you make on a daily basis for instance when i arrived in prison i arrived angry I was aggressive. I told myself, look, I've been into prison, but this time it was for a long time. I've been three months, six months, ten months, you know. Those were nothing. You, you know what us very soon. But now this is 15 years. It's a, I'm going to spend approximately a decade behind bars. And it's a long time because yeah. a day in prison is like a year. And uh, because I was angry, I developed this anger. Anyone in your oh, my chance like him. I, I wouldn't stand. Imagine I'm gonna spend approximately a decade in prison, and I have to be bullied. Yeah. I have to live that life. I told myself, look, no, 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 no. My book are few, are few. Like people, they must know what no lawyers like, and especially what. Uh, made me to behave like that when i was sentenced 2012 14 november 15 years a month uh, uh, previously my brother was sentenced to 15 years a different crime so I read a different crime and now yeah, he's saving 15 years um the following month i'm sentenced to 15 years you know what that does to my mother she almost died because of two of his sons they are serving 15 years. They went to prison and she was very sick outside. Every time when I go to make a phone call, my sister will be crying on the other side of the phone. Brother, oh, mama, yo, the, the, like these things is affecting you. You are, you are having to deal with your sentence. You have to deal with other inmates who sometimes they want to take some chances to you. And you have to deal with the wardens. Some of them they they how can i put this some of them they, they 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 make it worse for you to save time because of the things they are saying you know those things they are killing you psychologically but not all of them some of them they will tell you because some of them they are believers they believe in mm. god so what solitary confinement does to a person i believe that i always say uh, and I think this might sound maybe philosophical. I always say that reality doesn't shape perception. It is perception that shape reality. In other words, circumstances don't shape a person. It is a person who shapes circumstances. So what is important in that space, it is the choices 
that you are making on a daily basis. You might end up exhibiting psychosis, end up in having to uh, see a psychologist yeah. on a daily basis because of the choice, how you view your sentence. For instance, I was sleeping on top. You know, those, uh, you know, double beds. Yeah. There's someone sleeping beneath and someone sleeping on top. So the guy who's sleeping on top is saving life sentence and I'm saving 15 years. So <laughs> when I look at him down there, I'm like, yeah, but hey, this guy is going to be here long. Then I develop hope to say, but no. And at least by viewing his situation and yeah. his sentence, immediately I develop hope. But you understand? But I think for me now, Realistically speaking, it is the choices that you make because you can decide to say, look, I accept that I've committed this crime. I deserve to be here and uh, I'm going to serve my time without uh, having to bother anyone. Just live my life and focus, maybe do positive things because what keeps you going in prison, it's not in Africans, babies are going to eat and lay. So you just eat and sleep. Mm -hmm. That's why you get frustrated. You get depressed. You end up having to drink those. Uh, I forgot the name. I'll tell you now. Some those. sort of mbamba. Then. No, no, no. Sleeping pills. I forgot okay. them. The allergics. Mm. Yeah, I think it's allergics. So you have to take those pills. So that you sleep and but there comes a time which no tongue will be appeal and abo. We understand that you have to face this reality on a daily basis. So for me now, uh, how we deal with your confinement, because there's a chapter that I call the pain, especially when I talk about prison in my book. The chapter is called the pain of confinement. Even if you are positive, when this case is busy, you must. So, Mabazo Valley Jail, Lesas Kia, I think, see round a guy three or four, Slogus Kia. And you feel it in your heart, which are like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a valuable item. It's like a locking for money. And we are Muslim, I'm a pantry, we are actually so that you don't come back into this place. For me, I know people might have different perspective. To the question you 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 asked to say, what does it do psychologically, emotionally, and also physical? I believe it's the choices because look, I made big bad choices. I joined the gangsterism, the twenty six, and every time, I, whenever someone is stepped, anything if it goes wrong, tapelo must be called out. Even if I'm not involved, my name will also come up to investigate whether Tapelo was involved mm. in the stepping's or initiating the stepping uh, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, the choices, I will stick to that. The choices that a person make will determine how you're going to spend your time within the solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this perspective. I think it must, must be very difficult to... I found, mm. I found my life mundane and, and ridiculously routine when I was in my 20s and I used to go to a call center every single day, mm. I thought that if I'm always going to be waking up at 6 in the morning, going somewhere that I don't like working at, and I did that for six years, I thought that that was a mundane, laborious, routine task that I was not willing to participate in, but I had to. I had a child, and I had to, I had to do it. Mm. I had the discipline to, to impose that situation on myself because I had to, I needed that 12,000. I needed that 15,000 I was getting paid there. So mm. I would find it very difficult to be in that kind of a routine. Um, where are you from originally? Um, and what was your family life like? Yeah, uh, for me, I think uh, I come from a very, very painful story. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've told this story many a times. And like Paul, when he spoke to the Christian in in Rome, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh, like myself, I'm not ashamed of my story. This is my story. It's my past. As painful as it is, I cannot hide nor sugarcoat it. I tell it as raw as it is. Uh, my ma I don't know my father. Till to this day, 
uh, I think next week, 19 November, I'll be turning 31. I don't know who's my father. I think the last time I saw him uh, was maybe three years. But as much as I try to, you know, uh, uh, look back in retrospection mm. and, and, and try to visualize his face, how he looked, it, I find it difficult. And uh, my mother, may her soul rest in peace. She died 2016. She was a hero for us. You know, I've never seen someone like her. She's a stalwart, five kids raised all by herself next to nothing. Uh, we never had, even to this day, a proper infrastructure, which is home. Like Moser. We never had that. My mother, as she was having us, she was renting the whole Tembisa, moving from one place to another. So in 1997, and this is where it gets so painful, in 1997, I recall vividly this, wherever I go, whoever I become in this life, I will never forget. In 1997, we became homeless. Literally homeless because my mother could not meet the... Uh, what you call this the 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 lease mm. agreement so she could not pay rent and she had to run away and leave some of her belongings in that room and we became homeless i recall we were sleeping on in the unfinished rdp houses mm -hmm. Uh, there were people during those times as M. Tambega, they were building those RTP houses. Uh, the security guards will be there by Enzumli law, you know, and we'll be sleeping there. And there's no roof, there's no windows. And when you just open your eyes, you are looking into the blue sky. You know, that, that was tough. And uh, plus, nearly winter. It was cold, you know, in the... Uh, I've wrote about that in the book. I will wake up in the midst of the night and I will, you know, put my mother into a tough interrogation. Say, Mama Ganti, why us? Mm. Why? Because at school, there are kids who are coming from homes that are warm. The daddy is there, mommy is there, and they are doing well. Now my shirt is dirty and I had to bath. In, it's not even bathing. It's like my case pumping because I said because of Vuganje Ang Sulubu. So take a dawn, go to school. Uzola si biza roke malibis. But I'm saying it's in the book. So that was tough. The 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 few or first years, especially the first seven years of my life was tough, mm. tough because I had to be a man. I couldn't. I I don't remember being a child. You know, you, 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 Eskolweni, you have to go to Izin, Kualezi, Espagiswayo, you need to put them, Okabangele Kaya, go to, okay, I have sisters, Abase, Lelena, and no brothers, is Ozbega, Gatle, Lababa, Nebazos, I have no latis in bring it here, because you, you have to become responsible at that early age. And mind you, Eskolweni, I was doing well. Even to this day, uh, I have a grade 11. I've never failed at last. Never failed. I passed with flying mass, especially from the 1997, I was doing grade one. I was doing well. The teachers were recommending me, but the environment in which I was bred, in which I was taken care of, it was tough for me mm -hmm. to develop the intellectual faculties, to, to you know, have libraries, have... Those privileges were not there. I always say I'm not blaming poverty. I'm that type of guy who, look, uh, there's no excuse for failure. I believe solely in that whole type of, there's no excuse. There are people who grew up in poverty. There are people who come from rural areas. They used to go to school barefooted, yet they went to school. They are doctors. They are judges. They are what, what today. It's, again, the choices that I decided, even though those choices, the environment was shaping my perception of life, and I ended up making 
wrong choices. So the very first seven years of my life was tough. Seeing your mother with five kids, finding it difficult. Sometimes Silala Gulo was the next other day Silala Gulo was so it was tough. It was tough for Umama Wami. I I've heard people blaming their parents, you know. But my mother, one thing in Tandangai, she never decided to go slatlem domain. She never decided to go share somewhere. Even though she sometimes uh, 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 drank alcohol. I understand that was a coping mechanism for her because it was even difficult for her to raise Abafanabai train, Amantambozanai too, alone. Even to this day, I still ask myself, how did she? manage to raise us because oh mama was raised she tried by all means to keep us together like a hen you know gathering her chickens that was my mother she was always there for us but life was unfair yeah it's very difficult to grow up in poverty and no child should 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 be deprived of a childhood yeah. um you know uh, i i do understand your point that we should not be making any excuses. However, I do mm. want to say that like, it's, it's not fair to grow up in those circumstances. And mm. it, ex it is expected as well that um, from time to time you will have kids um, who out of the need for food, they will go out of their way then to go and steal, which is not encouraging stealing. Um, but we, we, can't, we can't deny the fact that where you come from also can determine or has a contributing factor to what you become eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't look at people who are success stories like myself or yourself coming from extreme poverty uh, mm -hmm. and we say just because some of them are judges that um, no one has an excuse. Mm -hmm. Some kids are inventive uh, that when you're 14 years old, it's like, yo, you can see we don't have food. We're not going to eat. And I know how it feels to not eat. And mm -hmm. maybe given mm -hmm. the opportunity, I would have gone out and stolen. Mm -hmm. That's the context under which we need to understand in South Africa all the time is that mm. there's so many people who need, there's so many people who go without food where I come from, where you come from, in villages and townships. And some kids will say, let me solve this problem that we have. And they will solve it by going out of their way to go and steal, which is not a good thing, but they're solving the problem in that moment because we need food to eat, to survive. Mm. You know? Mm. Mm. Um, it's very difficult. Like it's very difficult to reconcile that, and I and I, and I completely identify with your story. I completely mm. identify with mm. it. I'm not saying that people must go out and steal, but mm. it is expected that those kids will steal. Mm. In so fact, uh, sorry to, sure. to just come. I wanted to say I love to say this. I know it's an academic kind of adage, but it, 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 I think it's extremely important for people out there to even uh, grasp what I'm about to say. I always say like within the academic space, especially those who read and understand. But I'm using that analogy to, to drive a point home. Like I used to say, and not it is not just me, but within the academic space, it, ex, it, it is accepted that a text out of context becomes a pretext for a proof text. Because context, mm -hmm. because, con uh, uh, because context always gives you content. Mm -hmm. So it is important to understand context mm -hmm. so that we don't explain these things on a surface. Uh, uh, for instance, the reason why, especially when you look at Soweit Zola, Emden, you look at Deep Slot, you look at Ivory Park, you look at Tembisa, you look at Alexander, they are both Sakan and both Dave Tom. We mustn't forget that South Africa in 1994, what it achieved was the political power, not the economical power. And because of that, the parents who raised us, they come from the onslaughts of apartheid system. You understand? And because our parents were deprived during the days of apartheid, they were deprived education, they were deprived all those things. Mm -hmm. And now it's post-apartheid, and now things, they seem to be going back to normal, and this thing called uh, democracy. The very parents who raised us, you know, in poverty, 
uh, 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 find it difficult to give us the things that will then help us to grow up and become better citizens because they don't have economy and without economy again it will be difficult for us to adapt especially in the environment to make right choices in my early years as a teen hence i i told you about soccer my brother he was like you the firstborn he used to mingle and meet all professional soccer players Kaiser Chiefs, Morocco Saulos, Dynamos, Jomo Cosmos mm. during those days. And you will take me, especially Kakurukukai, because I was a fan of Kaiser Chiefs for a long time. He will take me to Kobo Rao, I will see Bo Prime Balo, Ibo Lefakosha, <laughs> all those uh, legends. Yes, sir. You, 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 you know, and I was skillful in football. That was, I believed, Kutu Unkulunkulu put this talent in me to play soccer and take my family out of poverty. And whenever I look at this youngster, whenever I'm watching soccer, I see myself in them, but I'm always asking, what happened? Why didn't this dream materialize and becomes a reality? Because the potential was there. I remember... Uh, uh, bo, bo, this guy, he went to even England, Stephen Pinar. That mm. was my nickname. Even in the book, they used to call me Stephen Pinar in the pitch, in the field of play, because <laughs> I was very skillful in terms of dribbling and all that. I had pace. I, 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 I thought I, I thought to myself, Tapelo, one day you're going to play for Kaiser Chiefs, one day. But the devil, it's been said in the great book, the black book, that he comes to uh, kill, steal, and destroy. Somehow he stole that dream from me of becoming one day a professional player because I I, I, I was close. But John Shoes I remember there's a place in Edenville called Sports Club. Mm. So that's where Bopito Musiman, you will find them. There are a lot of soccer players. But it's in Eden Vale. It's so it's possible. So like like as I was saying, Jorge, context is important to understand Jorge. That's why you find I I still see those things even to this day. I do public speaking as an inspirational speak. I go to these disadvantaged schools. Bo M. Denny Jr., Bo Dr. Villagas. Like you look at Dr. Villagas, that high school, you can see kids. You know, it's a high school. They are smoking drugs in the toilet. And the teachers know, but they can do nothing because corporal punishment is disallowed mm. now in this day and age we are living in. And the, because of this so-called rights, Yabantuana, they do as they please. They destroy their dreams. Why? Why they destroy their dreams? Because I, I remember looking in that school, like, Yabantuana, Abasa Pupi, Putlungen, Abasa, like, to dream to become something, it's it's fantasy to them. It's just an imagination for them because no one became anything a luxury. Si as gul estrata u ban banu bongani bi uaba ikin sa sega sele ulche like aga se ku mpilu en sega se kumeren jaye tune en manche en u ban banu en za hundred years like okay coming to girls uban ban sega na banto na bai fo u matrags like. Like, no one, it takes courage, it takes audacity, it takes, like, a, a mental shift for someone. That's why Utologuti, there are only few people who then get out of that situation and become something in life within a masses of young people, mm -hmm. a lokshin. It Only few. Why? Here is the problem, here's the problem. A lot of guys who then are growing up within the families as a right, we understand that they went to school. Once they get that education, once they achieve the business, once they, they begin to uh, shake hands with the political elites, with celebrities, things, and, and they get that chunk of money, what they do, they migrate to suburbs. 
You understand? Then they begin to associate with people like-minded. People who look like them, who talk like them, who drive cars that they have. Then there's no inspiration in Lokshin. There's no, like, because why? Mababuya, they come with this car spec, and those who failed become the street boys. Become those who, hey, hot man, even if we into an, hey, hot man, you understand that, and you give them 20 rand, and you are not exposing them to opportunities that will really, really better their lives. And this is the problem of black people. We are not for each other. I think we are, again, this black hate, this black on black hate, it's, it's, it's huge. That's why Obona. Especially in youth, Abanto I was listening to, I think it's in prison, but I'm a daughter work. You know, they are in prison. Abanye, Amagay, Abanye. And I say that not to, uh, to, to be against the LGBT community. I'm just saying, quoting uh, the, the person who was saying, but Abanye, they are gays. Abanye, uh, I forgot the third one, but to Abanye, but prison, Abanye, but feel. So that's why so that's what uh, the statement of a lady was listening i think a, a youtube so that's the challenge put lungelo in the day and age especially look a lokshin i i urge you and i ask you one day drive your car go to so way to a especially maybe to schools but Dr. Villagas, they call them Kulmangas. I'm always in those schools and they don't pay me but because of the passion and the drive in Nile to 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 tell these young people the choices in ZNZ which look regardless try some of them never assist I'm not trying to make myself a safe in bed but because I know what it takes for you to end up falling for drugs, especially like they will ask me, why do I go to school? They don't see a need because why? Some bangenile, I think it's how many years? 12 years until you reach matric. Yeah. And after matric, because there's no money for you to further your education and ba end up a election. And umunya buzo kutkiafana. I'm just preparing myself to be like that person. So what's the use for me to study hard? And, and because why? All people, they migrated to four ways. They migrated to the suburb. And there's no inspiration election. And that's the challenge. Yeah. Um, I'm terrified of my township. I would not be able to go there <laughs> anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, I find it terrifying. I think that um, if people know that I'm around, they tell other people and then it can land on the wrong ears and... The wrong ears will just shoot me in the head. Mm. No, uh, you know, unfortunately, like mm. I'm, in my perspective, mm. uh, I always go with a bunch of people when I go to my township, even though I'm a success story from them and I represent Inyanga all the time. Uh, but I'm terrified. I cannot go there. No, no, I'm not just saying, look, uh, to be honest with you, yes, we need to be positive. Mm. We need to think big. You know, I was reading a book by Ben Carson, a beautiful book about uh, thinking big. I agree with you. I'm not saying stay silent and embrace poverty. I'm saying, look, uh, let some of your what you do be established in those areas. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you physically you are not there, you can have people having studios, se searching for talent, exposing young people yeah. to opportunities that they can better their life, irrespective of whether you have a college degree or not. You understand because Mangitin Yapega looking back in retrospection and the choices and the decision it was because the opportunities were not there. Mm. We, we, we understand that it's difficult. That's why Ubona Sonke Sivalela Nimyango because Sonke Itungenzele and from the Christian community, I don't say this badly. I'm not gonna name the churches. Uh when I was in prison in Leogop, I show you the church. Did I show you the church? Because it's opposite. Opposite uh, the prison? Yeah. Okay, the, I don't think... Where we were, yeah. where we were, where the cars were parked, this side, there's a church. There's oh, a big okay. I building. I may have seen it, yeah. Yeah, that, that's my church. It's called Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, the church is in Sentin. So when I was released, I was released 
in that environment, in that space. And that church, I can guarantee you, it has political elites, it has celebra majority celebrities, businessmen, men of influence and affluent in that space. And my challenge to adapt in that space was hard. Not because they were bad, not because they were arrogant, not because they were judgmental towards me. They were very kind. They were very loving. They assisted me so that I get on my feet. But the thought, you know, uh, uh, I've never been around professors. I've never sat with business people that I watch them in TV. Yeah. You know, now I had the opportunity to sit with them and have a meaningful conversation with them. For me, it was like a dream come true. And I had to, the, uh, the, the, the chance to uh, study their lives, see how they operate, their kids, how they grew up, you know, talking English, mommy. They, I've never been in those uh, uh, spaces. I grew up in extreme abject poverty, Elokshin, let's say Ivory Park. And that thing paralyzed me psychologically because I could not understand, especially God, to say, if Ngempela kuna bantu ba pilaga anje, emtlabene and professing to worship you. Now I worship you, God. You knew even before I believed in you, but because of suffering and abject poverty, it paralyzed that belief in you. Now I'm in so way. I'm showing you something. I'm in so way now, and there are local churches, same name of the church, but different branches. Now, Latin Corner, I visit those local churches, and there's a different uh, scenario. I don't know how can I put it. Because people who attend those churches are coming from poverty, yeah. are coming from, they are like me. We, we share the same experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, within those churches, everyone, Ufnuk Vezikanda. So what we normally do, we pull each other. Because song, Esantini, no one bothers about Tapel, what he becomes or wins. Because they are driving big, they, they are there. But in these local churches, there's a struggle because you, you, you understand what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's, that's the challenge. I was saying, good, like, I wish and pray. I was praying to God, good, and see, so financially, where I can have this institution, something, the studios, in, in, where is your help? Because majority of them, we are losing them to alcohol, to substance. And mind you, alcohol, substance abuse, which is drugs, in and of themselves, they are not a problem. Psychologically, these are coping mechanisms. They are deeper issues that youth are dealing with yeah. the deep-seated issues so alcohol every weekend party it helps them to escape reality and live in that space because then they feel better about their situation that's why they have to uh, get drunk every day yeah. because reality kicks in so you need to escape again that reality alcohol is not an issue Issue is the deep things that they don't want to deal with them. Thank God I had to deal with them in prison. All right. Uh, what were the circumstances that led you to dropping out of grade 11? Something must have been happening around your life. Did you get arrested at the same time? Just describe to us the picture. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I was in primary. So this grade, oh, okay. this grade <laughs> eleven, <didn't> <laughs> yeah. No, you've never been in high, in high school. No, no, no. Obviously, I, in, in prison. I, I yes, I had to now and then. But outside, you've never been in high like, school. Like, yeah, to I, see other 14, 15 year olds. No, no, no. I've Girlfriend, never, boyfriend. No, no, no. I've never <laughs> been into high school. I'm, I'm being honest with That's you. That's interesting. So, is school of being local mbuela prison? Snini ni nienzu grade nine? Is nini ni ya yega ngandasta until nzengufiga ku grade eleven? But like outside Gutin Kalega from no, no, like, like it was, it was like a Begunzima, Begunzima, and Kulega. I don't want to lie, like, I like I said, I don't want to the viewers out there think, oh, Loputulo, Unama excuses, I don't believe in scapegoats, but 
it was uh, difficult. It was mm. difficult, especially one of so the... So was it, was, it, was it mainly you being arrested and not being available to go to school? No, I... Or was it the, the home situation that was horrible that the, you couldn't even go to school? The home situation was horrible. Mm. And at school, I was uh, uh, being in troop uh, because I was bullying other kids. I became a very staunch buller. Mm. I was a, a, a child with a lot of issues that were going on in my life. And for instance, let me, you know, take a digression and just uh, illustrate for you. I think this is a good concept. Uh, in Tembisa, there's a school called uh, Ellen Ridge. Uh, they call me pastor there because I used to counsel uh, uh, students, school kids, you know, deal with them, pray for them, encourage them, you know, educate them, our self-development. But to cut the story short, there was this young girl, Chantel. She was so notorious, that girl, and she was doing metric. She was a bigger shopper local. So the other time, yes, a school in some eighteen. And so there's this noise eskolweni sabantwana only to find out that she's chasing the principal with iokap and principal uloku yabalega and there's this vibe because it's a it's in rubber rich so it's a colored school but of course abantu abamnyama bakhona and mind you that mile la pekati so they say the abantu abamele bamvulele they are going to help they come and bavule gate uh, she was apprehended and taken to the office. So I was using the office Yaga memory life orientation. So I let her into my uh, the, that office I was using. But I principal at So I'm sitting with this this uh, a beautiful girl Chantel and I'm thinking what to say to her. Mm. It's a challenge for you. You know, it's a I'm sitting, we are, it's the two of us in the room. It's quiet. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm having this battle in my mind. And immediately, and I'm praying silently. So, God, give me inspiration. Mm. Give me wisdom. How can I reach out to this girl? Then I begin to say, uh, girl, can I talk to you? And luckily enough, the girl says, okay, talk. What do you want to say? Say, look. Do you know Rechapak? So I know Rechapak, that site in box back says, then I begin to tell her my story. I used to live there with colored guys. When uh, the police was looking for me, I would run away to Rechapak because those guys, I met them in prison, so they were my friends. I will hide that site and talk about drugs. I begin to open up on my life experience, the things that I used to do, the crimes, and she was so interested to say then how did you manage to walk out of that life i'm like oh the, the 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 grace of god the power of god god was able to change my life and she began to cry i said what's wrong say are you willing to listen i said i'm willing she began to open up and what i will tell you is something that shocked even the principal she said she she's beautiful, beautiful. She said, I I don't like myself. I don't love myself. I say why? I say, you know, the things that are going on at home. Home for me it's hell. Mm -hmm. So I say, what's happening at home? She's living with her mother. She was actually because she passed on. She was living with her mother, father, and brother. And the entire house are addicts. Mother, they are smoking thick, you know. And to even make things worse, this is something that will even shock you. She's pregnant. She doesn't know who's the father between her biological father and biological brother. Mm. Now, that's deep. Both of them are having sex with her. And she doesn't know who impregnated her. 
The mother knows what is happening in that house. But she was quiet. Immediately I called the principal. The principal came, the teachers came. There was, it was an emotional situation mm. because this thing went on for a long time. And in school, she was labeled as notorious, as corrupt, someone who will never amount to anything. Don't ever associate it with her. She has nobody to unleash, release, speak what she's experiencing. I said to some of the teachers, a child that is notorious and troublesome, that's the child that needs attention more than the ones who are punctual, who are always at school. Mm -hmm. The ones about Rupai, they are the ones because I've been there. No one, because that behavior, it's abnormal behavior. Because it's not accepted within the context of society. Therefore, when someone is behaving like this, it's a sign. I need someone. But unfortunately, the society is you are ostracized. You know, you are disfellowship. People, they distance themselves from you. And you die alone before you die. The physical death and that's one of the painful things that i've ever seen so that thing in fundise uh, something in life routine the behavior was demonstrating escoloini no one especially the teachers could realize what i needed help rather i was suspended expelled escoloid i was sent to the demons to finish up with me, which is even as in bed, because no one wanted to sit down with me. I always say the definition of understanding is to comprehend the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. Your public life, it's a revelation of your private life. Something is going on, but no one could see what happened. I heard this one I say, and not to desecrate my mother in her grave. I fought with her, but not physically, verbally, on the whereabouts of my father. It seemed to me that something my biological father did to my mother. Because like whenever I raised that issue, because Nami where is my biological father? Because Because what will happen, Ekaya, during festive season, Ganji, four of my siblings, one by one, they will go to their fathers to get him, but as a Christmas, you know, to get uh, some, some of Imali, little girls. I mean, I will be sitting at home waiting for the four of them to come back. Mababuya, Kuzokolekwa. And I will get uh, inferior things than them. Mm -hmm. And this, it will hurt you. You will have this understanding of life. But you are a kid, for Christ's sake. And Linda, in because that's what I even argue in the book, The Absent of My Father. And I always say, because as much as I'm sharing this story. I'm also giving insights and inspirations, not theoretical speaking, but from my own experimental understanding of this life I'm emerging from. One, regardless of the sophistications and complications of the relationship, be it marriage, be it uh, um, jolo, boyfriend, girlfriend, even if a relationship is complex, don't ever walk away from your kids. Because the reason why we are in experiencing violent crimes, especially against women and children, those guys, for instance, I'm a father and I'm I have a little daughter, Mercedes. I don't know what it means to be a father because a father, it's not something you read from a book uh -huh. and you do it. Uh -huh. Somebody must display it for you mm. while you are growing up 
that love relationship between a father and mother was never displayed for me. I'm not making an excuse. That's why she experienced the femicide. That's why she experienced the GPV. Because these guys, they don't know what it means to be a man. Yeah. They don't know what it means to lead a family. They don't know. Because why? It was never, you know, demonstrated and displayed for them to see those things. So that's what, for me, I have to now learn. I have to now read the Bible, get books, read what it means to be a father, you know, get people, go to the seminars, listen to those who are uh, doing it better because no one is perfect in this context or in this area, but there are those who are doing it better. So for me, in Leon Toleo, it's an emotional thing. You go to Raising a child is not about buying in Basla and being there financially. One of the greatest thing in Ege is that it's time and care. Yeah. Being there, playing with your child, rolling my pants. That's love in action. That's how, like being there, talking to your child, reasoning. Nah, no, 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 I call right. No, this one is right. No, no, no. Asambe so lalipolo. No, being there, umpege at lalipolo. Those things are Zang's experience. Yeah. Then that's why we end up bottling up the anger. Then you look at these guys today who are going into relationships with these beautiful sisters. Before you know it. The sister is dead, bent and dumped somewhere. Why? It's normal for them. We, and, and that, that, that's what they think what it should be. And you find this one's but ba, ba, boss my relationship because why they come into relationships with this thing without detoxed, without being transformed from the past life. So that was Tapelo. I was angry in fate. I look back some of the crimes I've committed in shame. Sometimes, man, I'm not lying to you. I will jump out of the bed, kneel down, and say, God, please take it away. Don't busy allowing it to come back to my corridors of my thinking. Please, Lord. Because why? It, 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 it makes me uh, 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 feel as if the forgiveness of Christ is not real. Could God forgive me for such horrible things? And because of why the ang look at the crimes that are committed outside and look at the level of violence. Why? It's because of these people. Like I used to believe good Abantaba Pilagam Nand by Ankolot. For the sake of Gutibona, they had it smooth mm -hmm. and I had no, it can't be. No, Bangolota, and I, I will torture them to feel what I felt growing up as a lad. So, these are some of the things I wish we can have a robust conversation around these things. Good, umparatu as good, no. Especially when it comes to the context, yabo baba. For instance, men can break how many women they have smashed, but in those episode of smashing how many have you impregnated those kids they are left fatherless someone come to father that kids abuse that child the child grow up angry before you know it you see the violent crimes committed outside i always whenever i preach i say in fact look but what I'm saying is a fact. You can never run away from it. Go back to the bushes and look for the kids that you have planted and you left. Go back. Because the violent crimes, the femicide, because why? They are angry. That's why you know, I, I talk about that. For instance, it's easy. It's easy. It's not just easy. We are so 
uh, uh, eloquent and, and, and articulate and persuasive when it comes to Okshasha in Tomozana and and Ietlise in underwear. But when the results are there, you are not even picking up your phone. And that's why I'm telling you now, I'm, I'm not working. I'm still trying myself. I'm trying the public speaking in, but I am in the life of my daughter. Look, she knows even no mother in law has got to tap the way at It even baffles them. You don't know what I've been through. Mm. I'm doing this because I know what it feels. Not any the waste tanangakona numtana. I'm like, it's you can't take away. I can't stay two days in my bone in I need an yam tata and yosala nai a mizwinkin a pack because I'm trying to be a present dead. Lentu baba mang yenze yona, I cannot perpetuate it. It has to end with me. So with other people. But look, that's why Siba Namasho Abo Pap held Nam And you look at the men as they justify themselves as look, even if in fate to look, I always believe. The problem it's it's pride in many of the relationships, especially the complicated ones, where now Abantu they moved on, you have to co-parent. Pride. Get off from your horses. Come to, if you want to really be in Abantu there's always a way. There's no excuse go to mama agafunu mama abantuana. No, it's an excuse. If you did whatever it takes to be in Abantu Nabaku. Believe you me, Uzobim Pilu in Abantonabak. Mm-hmm. But if our funi, you're gonna make excuses, Abantona, they're gonna grow up, Bengibuga, the Nizolo, a and it's so painful to see these, these shows. And for me, I think Zang Fundisa Guji Chapel, I am not a perfect father, but I'm not a perfect father, but in this Jerebut, I'm gonna do the best of my ability, not to allow my daughter to experience what I've experienced. All right. Um, Utapelo has a book. It's called From Pulpit, uh, From Prison to Pulpit, uh, Utapelo Masukwane. Um, you may have heard the story um, on other platforms. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is have a conversation. Um, and of course, we're trying to lift other people's spirits uh, and of course if anyone of you here is watching and is interested, uh, as I'm speaking now, there is a number that's popping up throughout the episode. Uh, of his number, uh, you can book uh, or you can order the book from him or directly communicate with him. Um, of course, I understand that the expectation is that some stories must have a chronology. Um, it's very difficult because uh, people write books for a purpose that you then go and read their books to understand their story. So we'll get some of the things that used to happen in his life. We already have uh, beautiful stories already in this episode. So um, the number is on the screen now. Uh, you communicate with him if you want to order the book. Um, so there will be other parts of the story that we'll skip for the purposes of you then getting the book and getting the full story as well. Um, what were the circumstances that led you to be arrested? What kind of crime were you committing? Uh, just take us through that and also the the courts uh, the the, um, the court scenario um how many years were you arrested who represented you and so on just take take us through that moment oh okay uh again to give you a, a context uh ankalanga with these major crimes mm. i started a kasi you know because no one just wake up and becomes a desperado <laughs> and doing the highest and all yeah. those things. you have to start somewhere Endly, no John Jamatura and it escalated. You know, for me now we used to do Lama container on my Indian election, and this is what especially the the sound systems. There's a Makula, my Empu in in this quality. So we don't cook up in Shalago. And yeah, well, we will get arrested from time to time. It's probably because we were minors. We will go to Abu Jambo, which was in Kruger's door, but is no longer operative. Nzweba tisebe imuvile ngapa e. Uh, uh, so, uh, when we were saving 10 months, they took us to a maximum juvenile center, which is in Boxberg. Now, uh, for us, for them taking us there was for us to uh, stay maybe a few days and we will be then 
taken to the medium correctional juvenile center because maximum start from 11 years to life sentence alphabetically speaking mm -hmm. then medium start from let's say one day to 10 years so abantu abayenza from one day to 10 years they are not uh, put in the same prison as those who are doing 11 years to life sentence alphabetically speaking so tina we were taken to a maximum center basically and we are doing 10 months and to maslele lapaya but as mixing up these guys be a a grillini baskele tina singapa we are not in the same section as a good same section but tina sna masel way to us because we are mediums but they are maximums so these guys they will come you know because kuna abanye bebe bayazi lapha emedium bakhulume nabo these guys abayenza ma life sentence and into ane ngcane into ane ngcane ubona umuntu fana uze bathi lo wenza double life uthi ampe kuna 21 uya sibuza eh hey lo muntu like yeah like your fellejele lo muntu lo you know and we will hear their stories with how they committed crimes uze ma kakhuluma yeah bebe petty r4 ba petty mod and you look at yourself and say ah ngathi ngibojola ama binazi la people then maulokulalele that thing inspires you to have among pumala because you get to hear the tactics how it was done and you are learning oh okay melube is scouter melube yin melube yin then must puma now says ne connection kuna abanye we exchange the numbers with mawufuna ngibelelelana kuna abantu abanye sibayaziwe lokushini ngokunika ma number i3 tie ufunela labantu mawufuna and yes the guy called to say ahlangana and now we begin to do ama hijacking now we are on another level we are doing now the real crimes with mawubosho ya bosho street and from hijackings uh, they introduced me to house robbery so I mean I was good in doing lento by visa be batting a scouter. So in a scouter it's like a, a, an investigator. So I will come in a suburb and in Jacomangi Halela I will check you in Salaninga ki Nzon Vula Jenis Togele Ama over roller blue as if I'm looking for work and I will observe maybe for two months. Okay. Like I will check your your schedule. Your routine. Yeah, your routine. Okay. Consistently this guy Okay, Labanto Basalala by three, but on Sunday or on Saturday two. And these two maybe cherry nomganwake or ini. And that information I need to be sure because there's a science to these crimes but even though it's corrupted science <laughs> but there is some scientific yeah to to these things then i will go back and say information because each and everyone is a, a technician uh, according to their field of crime mm. <laughs> yeah i'm not uh, proud or, but you know you look back and think about it it was just uh, amazing because there's this one. His duty is to drive. Then he's Michael Schumacher. <laughs> he drives. We know what he, we get away with him. Then there's the gun operator, Kawagazali, and Maui gun operator, Melube Nesbin, because there are, there are situations where you'll have to pull a trigger because of maybe the person doesn't want to cooperate so melube nalesibindi ukuthi ne police will do bula you understand there's this one eh uhamba nawe u assist the gun operator lo maka khombile lo uvula iminyango ku hijacking lo uyo thatha ama items you know so everyone has his own particular job that he must do so i was a scouter and i was a driver at the same time because some of the scenes i will drive so in this crime that ling uh, boshwa guyo i investigated properly but like we are going to commit sin we are going to commit uh, something that is wrong and yes there is uh, that uh, thing good this thing might go wrong and on that day it went wrong. BC5, when we went to we started Lana uh, Hill Pro, we smoked ourselves 
uh is uh, crack and sabema because you need be, for you to commit such crimes you must be intoxicated uh but yeah. some of the guys being humble now will be better again young understand because bc5 uh three of them be baba dollar close to 48 45 mm. And these are people from Durban, Amazulu, Inkabi, Ilabantu, Lababa, Hayara, Amatexi owner. They are snipers. That's why I think Inkabi, Inkabi, you know, in, a, in a English, I'm a sniper. Ibo Abantu, I'm a hitman, Amatexi owner. So these guys, they are not smoking and they don't engage in a sexual intercourse for a week or so when they are going to commit such crimes because bad remote. So for minumutuam, because I need lumut minumutuam, it's intoxication substance. Nami for it's been the same, see, you know, and sapuma. I don't know what happened on that particular day on that crime scene because Mbanigazil information, which no must jump as Rasi, as Bulali. We might torture here and there so that Basnigas and Dresses Funa, but we don't kill Tina, you know, studies into that's how I operated with some of my peers. But these guys, they were brutal. So I, I suspect, as I heard a court go to, the neighbor saw the last guy, Maga Jamba, Ibonda. And what delay? I don't know what to delay. So he, but until something as she was telling a court, but something him tell you no, something is not right, Kamakelwan. Call the security buzz or check. So Umasingena, there's again this notion within uh, the guys is committing about these uh, crimes. There was this thing you go to but without you knowing. So Mangingena, I might find a diamond ring. So I feel bonus, and it might pay me one. So I go to fifty thousand, hundred thousand. So there was that thing. You go to Masingena, the main bedroom focus we go because that's where is in those corner. The main bedroom, you enter no first. So Masingena, of course, get kitchen. You like get help. So I'm just these three of them, but kibele baile pezulu. But I figure pezulu there was a jacuzzi. So Lomlungu is a judge. And the guy began to step him. Bam hmm. step, I believe, as the autopsy stated, 29 holes. I think, guys, they were brutal. They, Unprovoked. Like, like they were slaughtering the I'm judge. Just, uh, were they not provoked by... There's no. I, I don't know actually what transpired hmm. upstairs. Because I heard the struggle... Which you know something is not right, and as I am going up the stairs, amongst of Vela, there was a pool of blood, and now in my mind I'm like, yo, yo, it's happening because this is life sentence. Like in my mind, I'm like, because I don't want to go for such a long time. I'm like, yeah, manje, there's no way to you can argue. So they tend to have this authority. So I immediately went down the stairs. Like I'm thinking to my mind, like what happened? Then man figure fully window bona moto yo kalia pake kitin. Yama twenty-four-seven yeah. tactical response. Pake yo kala is two, yes three. So the survival instinct kick in ran away. So Mang Pega Kutin Natatani, Nyabona, it was his office, there's a chair, there's a gule pura pura nale lamasu case or there's a laptop and gune wallet la pang villenga tati wallet, my fagas come in, a puma, na jumpela a peg opposite. There was this garden boy, so like in Afghan Maplom, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. So, Magazan up and Hambang Maplom. Hambang Maplom until I managed to reach that other side, then Champele. So, Sang Villela Gulis Astratas a peg opposite. Yeah. So, I'm free to go. But now, there's arm response. Oh, they are responding yeah. to the crime scene, and you can't be running in a suburb. You have one of the Strata City Ganjan. There's electric fence, there's dogs. Excess suburb, access is all. You need to pretend as if nothing is happening. And see, so I had to, I told myself, you know, relax, relax. 
Then, Mangamba, I think maybe I was 200 meters away. I heard a gunshot. Your car. Da da da. Again, you be two. Da da da. Again, you be three. Da da da. Then, when I was, because in Boshwe, approximately 800 meters away from the crime scene, Mbona e GTI. A conin. Yama poisa with the. Things I'm a light, a blue eyes. I can't change. When is it a kitchen? Make don't dig in butter. You know, you just say pretend normal. And if I dumped the wallet, I wouldn't have arrested. Maybe bang yegile. The thing that took me to 15 years in prison was this wallet of the deceased judge. Figure can change it. My case was so complicated as in the cross examination. Like, the was so good. Okay, but this guy, 800 meters away, Labantu Bashala, Esoe to Ezola, the guy who shall let him be, and I'm in a tang bars Labantu. Because, like, yeah, that was a tough case until Guile, Yele, Yaba, Gulento, maybe so with separation of trial. So, I'm in a man here court being attended now. But, Bona, we, but Sambi Kalele one. So my figure le moti figi yama then ba pu mama punai tu kibis ba mo e la la pants I I cooperated bang abang search bang search Angela for a can or something bang faga because na amaji da bate da uyelo le tu le then bang faga ama ama cable tire bang faga move i GTI sa sa le move ama poise i tu i shaya i i u ten we went back to the crime scene. Mangena, the two other guys by following a foil declared dead mm. in the crime scene. So says Celestri. Two tried to escape to Lama Puleda to a Khalil. Be washab on a lava by two. So yes three I think be on a lava bany. But nani mangaya. Mangena nava kulega dead by valuing a ma foil like 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 I'm traumatized because for the first time in my life I was involved in the caliber of a crime of that nature. First time in I'm like an esboshiwe and figure the media and 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 like you could tell kona like per view and I'm sitting there hiding my face bas katlela mapuno yo it yeah it it was tough so amaji da baba tati moto zama mochari. I don't know what to pelele ganja and whether the family baba trola or ganja and then tina we went to a waiting trial. And uh, I had to explain what you wanted to figure ganja and game. And that's how so I... So during your trial, your stance was that you don't know those people? Yeah, because now I had to bring piga ngabo, angbaz, and the way ngi kuluma ngakona, Nyababulali is in a way because by a state witness. And I didn't have a choice because if I maintain good Nyabaz, I would have been in prison even to this day, saving a uh, fifty years maybe. Mm. So I have to know Angbaz Laba Bantu Laba. Mina le wallet like that, my story now is in the sense. Good we dopaganjani e wallet cause the two died. So they suspected some somehow uh be was suspected would maybe be C six one ran away, we all let the wallet. But this guy, and now the judge that is dead, at least if he was alive, because of Konuk explained about it, long in Bonil. So there's no eyewitness. There's no CCTV as well. You know, as a show, you but the wallet, and now remember, I have what is known as previous convictions yeah. and housebreaking. So later, the judge Bape, no, 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 this guy. He has a pending case here. I'm Robari, a common robber, rather. Pending case, it means the cases are set on. And also, I have previous convictions. We are going to 10 months. Now, I've been one server. So, and the way house breaking, the system. So, and uh, I think they made a deal. Uh, the judge by Pega go to Age Konasesko Lueni, Aikinta Yenza. We cannot, because I didn't have money. 
so I opted for illegal aid. Illegal aid, you be being some suspended sentence, cause I have to look for my wallet. But it's a explanation. A wallet would figure and it was nonsensical. Yeah, understand that. So I was sentenced to fifteen years imprisonment. But luckily enough, after saving four years, I went back with an appeal that. I uh, was approved after four years, eight months, and ten years was deducted. Oh, from the original 15? From the original 15. That's yeah. why I didn't sign a parole. Mm. So ten years was deducted because I had to be charged not with the murder, yeah. not with that horrible crimes. I was charged with the possession of a stolen good because yeah. now tolagale with the properties as belonging to the deceased. Yeah, so, so you were the, fortunate that you couldn't be pinned on that crime scene. I, like that survival instinct that kick in immediately mm. because if I was arrested in the crime scene Nabo, even to this day having such a jail. And even a, you evading the garden, the gardener. Yeah, because I can't bona. Yeah, so he could have. It is because important to us that he could have testified. Which is not in boni the maga champ. Yeah, I think nothing be wise. I think you know I, I couldn't say God, but because now God goes over now into go to while ababanye then they have to die. You know, I, I don't know. Like I look back in in that fateful day, and it, it's a mystery. That uh, it's inexplicable for me. I, I don't know how to explain yeah. that day. Like I might, I might be lying to you, Uncle I have words to explain what happened that day. But for me, to get fifteen years and also ten years deducted after four year eight months, I, I don't know. But I look back into that day and say, uh, God still has a purpose in below ya me. Si hamba ichin ehluge nengululego and kunabanye maybe God has been giving them a chance and they misuse the opportunities to amend their ways and 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 make right with God but they insisted in doing what they were doing and figure la unkudunkuru kona has to remove his grace and you have to face the consequences of your actions and imagine they are saving life sentence alphabetical without any possibility of getting a parole. That means they might die in prison. So uh and me being in maximum prison, I've been with young people in Aziogoti. Like how do we explain in Piloyalomund? This person never had like sexual intercourse. This person, aganam tuana, agana family, aganan, aganan. She's going to grow up in prison and eventually die in prison. How do you explain your life with the notion or the concept of meaning and purpose for your life? So I always tell uh, these young people, school in Guti, look, you are free to choose. But you are not free from the consequences of yep. your choices. And I'm telling you, we have seen even Newton introducing uh, this law of motion. For every action, there's a quite an opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Biblically, what you sow is what you reap. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, you can never plant the tree or the seed of banana and expect orange, your action has a recourse. So for me, now I look back in those things. That's why I'm Klanje, Nkululego. I will rather be a fool and take someone, Ngemtre, Lemfet, Kunzuembu, Elung season, a 500 thing, Patale rent. Knowing that there is an alternative. That I used to do back in Apuma, Nabuya, and twenty thousand Nabuya. But Nyas would be impilo, lay, axi impilo, you axi impilo, fair to axi impilo. And, and, and I always look back to say, if 
I knew what I knew today, back then, I would have been far in life. If I came to a self consciousness of who I am. I always say this within my preaching space, Guti, the day you meet God, you meet yourself for the first time. And with in light of that revelatory experience, it unlock and, and introduce you into yourself. And it unlock the, 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 the potentials. It unlock the, the, the abilities and the capabilities, it unlock the talents and the gifts, it unlock gatle gatle, who you are. It's, it's, it's a tragedy, a travesty in this lifetime to live a life not knowing who you are. Yeah. You understand that that's why you go to Bati, the richest place on earth, it's the cemetery, is the graveyards. Buried in those graves, are books that were not written, are songs that were not written and sang, are like they, they are president who never become president because they didn't allow themselves into a space where revelation can be received and 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 and, and become the, the best that they can be. I thank mm. God in Amtlanje. That's why I'm a staunch advocate for God. I don't talk God who is in the Bible. I, I talk God who I have uh, experienced. That's why the book is From Prism to Pulpit. If you see uh, 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 your death certificate, I, I, I don't know, between your birth and your death, there's a dash. And that dash represent your life. Oh, 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 you understand? Mm -hmm. Same applies to uh, the, the the title of my book. Within, from prison, that way to pulpit, there are two uh, 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 lives that I've lived. There's one life that I've lived. Prison, it goes back. How did I end up in prison? The lives I've lived, the things I've done, which I'm ashamed today. But thank God I realized mm. that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through Christ, by his love and by his grace, we are forgiven. Then you come to pulpit. It then elaborates and, and um, explains what I'm doing now. Because I find that I have a calling. God has called me to preach, not from theory, but from experience. You know, there was a time when there was two offenders in prison. I recall vividly, these guys, they will preach with vigor and vitality. They will preach Jesus. Now, it's one thing when someone coming from the outside walls of prison, I figure it was but it's quite another thing when someone wearing the same clothes like you mm -hmm. speaking about God, you begin to see the operation of God. Like even abandoned uh, out there, even if you are discouraged, you are hopeless. It's not like we are better or we are special or pile. But it really shows that there is a God who controls our destiny. But the choices, these are consequences. So, it's not like I'm having a good life. Things are tough. Tough. There are times where, like, like, I'm tempted, but I look to YouTube. I go to the comment section from whoever I have done interview. I will read the comments, reread them again. And immediately I will see how many lives I've touched. And they would, then I say, Tapelot, imagine mm. if tomorrow you are found that you have committed such and such. I have to go to even this, I will reread the comments because those comments, they keep me going. Because why? God 
I'm just a vessel. I'm just a human instrumentality in the hands of God. So listening to how people relate to the story, it inspires me to say, Tapelo, you cannot disappoint Laba Band. Better still, you cannot disappoint God. Nyamezela, Begezela, nothing comes easy in this life. And I'm not talking as someone or strong. There are times where you have to shed tears. There's a times where you go to Facebook, you go to Instagram, you look at other people, they are getting married, they are driving cars, and, but the problem now, once you want to compare yourself with someone's life, it will be better. If you started with the things I started with, then I can compare myself. Mm. But we are coming from different and diverse circumstances and families. So it genuinely to it's fundamentally different. We are born into fundamentally. So I can therefore not compare myself with your situation. I cannot Don't ever compete yourself. Look, you look at the likes of Vusi Tembegoayo, the rock star of public speaking. You look at Noel Jones, the rock star of preaching. And there will be someone who's better than you talking about podcasts there will be someone who's doing it better than you for sure but you have your role to play specifically the moment you focus on outsmarting or doing it better than uzoba king but if you want to do it within the perimeters of the capabilities God invested in you and becoming the best that you can be, you're going to excel. The problem is now it's outsmarting each other mm-hmm. and becoming better. No, you're, you're, each and everyone, according to his ability. I love the parable in when Jesus told a parable of Abantu uh, uh, the Thailand. Some gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. And it, Bible, it according to their ability. Then God left. They buried Lowe five, uh, traded uh, uh, the master Magabu Yum Tola Nateni, Low on a one one bile, I bear, and Magabu Yatino, Yamaz, and Gulungulut is so horrible, except. But what I'm trying to say, good for me, now this is how even to this day I'm surviving. Mm-hmm. I still believe that my story, Conan uh, Jesus Akala. I understand uh, uh, they, they, there is a lot ahead of me. We are still in the great controversy. We are still in the battle. I have to just put on the armor of God and keep going. Before I let you go because of time, um, I want to ask a very important question that only a person like yourself can answer. Um, the prison's capability of correcting a South African man. Um, please critique it. Where can it be improved? Is it capable of providing an environment where someone can go in and come out uh, corrected? Uh, I know that you do mention a lot about choice, personal choice, and deciding to accept your circumstances and improving yourself. But now we're looking at the, the system itself. We're looking at it is it adequate uh, to produce corrected human beings that when they come in five years later, they are better than how they come in? Um, or do they come out worse? Um, and how can that be improved? Uh, I will shock you, Nkululego. <laughs> I will shock you. The, the rehabilitation method of correctional service it's so amazing. Why I say so? Prison, correctional service, anywhere, even beyond the borders of South Africa, mm-hmm. I find it quite paradoxical, I might use that word, because this very system is one of the system that produce products they don't believe in. No way you will find an ex-offender being hired by the very system that produce you. Now, how in the world do you think that private sectors, private companies 
other companies out there will hire us if the very system that produced us to say, look, we rehabilitated the person, we believe he's rehabilitated, and therefore we reintegrate him back to society. We believe that he's now a good father, a good mother, mm. a good person, but they themselves cannot hire us. Mm. So they need to demonstrate from that point, which look, but they don't do that. Hence, there's a difficulty for us to even get employment because the very system as producer doesn't believe in us. Secondly, uh, the system, like I said, well, I will even revert back to the choices, but looking at the system itself uh, for rehabilitation, like the number one, there are skills development in prison, skills development, abo, plumbing, carpentry, and etc. Uh, uh, various of skills that uh, they help you develop. And secondly, uh, secondly, of course, there's an opportunity of education, which again, you must make that decisive choice to say, let me go back to school. I look back and I regret why didn't I sorry why didn't I use that choice uh, that that opportunity rather I wish I also I like no go solar every day but when I young school because it was for free I, I, the way you had the time as well you know me brilliant in a corner maybe manage maybe say saying need degree uh, but it's never too late, so I wasted time in gangsterism, and it came as saying, saying, but transformed by the renewing of my mind, it was too late for me because I was going outside. But I can enroll with the educational system. So the correctional service, in a way, there is that, let's say 40, 50, no, let's say 40% of its rehabilitation method that it's uh, working and you have to as an individual for instance me now i have to admit first that's why it it's a long rehabilitation honestly i have to go back to that but your rehabilitation it's a long to first you have to admit good have wrong the society I am on the wrong side. I am the wrong one. La bantu ban langdang ne kaya bazon valela ban fagu system ban eh 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 ba 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 bang chelo guti no now you have a criminal record in those in chelo. I am the one who went out of the way against the written law, and now as a result of that, I'm suffering the consequences. There's a criminal record. Um, uh, not trusted in the society. The community doesn't owe you anything. Look, you need to demonstrate. Like I said, I go to schools. No one pay me. You're my assembly for five minutes. At best, for three minutes. Then I go back home or I go to another school to do a proposal. No one is paying me. But I believe what God has gifted me. And I need to go back and give back to the community and demonstrate what I can be trusted again. I can, but you don't dictate when and how you should be trusted. Yeah. You should sit back and allow them to be who they are. And whether they respond negatively, you don't have to take it and start saying, yo, we, uh, we are father. No, 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 no. There are people who don't have their fathers, Namtlanj, who were providers. You took their life. There are people who don't have their daughters. You took their life. Do you think, oh, yeah, you are rehabilitated, now you are a pastor, welcome back. No. Some of them, they won't allow you to come to their house. I respect their decision because I understand where I have put myself. You understand? But I will do what I need to do by the best of my ability to win them back 
You understand? He me. It's up to me to win, not them. But no, he me because I am on the wrong side. So there's what is called VOD, which is victim offender Offenders. dialogue. Yeah. Where before you are released, especially those who have committed ama crime, safana nabo rebu, you know, kakulu, nemeda, where before you are released, uh, before you call, especially mawe ago parole party, they will call the victims, which lomuntu pela says, I'm keeper, nifila ganja, ningaye, if then there's still that bitter animosity, then they will tell the family, which no anga pumeli, la komite konai crime. Maybe mkipele ne makaya. Send a mattress or se makaya. Because if I release a lapaya, there's uh, a potential danger kuti pangambulala. Retaliation. Yeah, into zinjalo. And uh, yeah, there is, to, to, to be honest with you, Uncle Lego, there is that uh, rehabilitation, a prison. It's the individual. Because abanye, for instance, there are programs that are compulsory based on the nature of your crime that yeah. you have to do. For instance, Mawenze, like, abo, uh, I'm robbery with aggravating circumstances. Therefore, you will have to do abo anger mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. into Zinchal. So the offenders, they go to these rooms where the program are being uh, uh, conducted mm. and they are not participating uh, with their whole anthropological capacity, I mean their entire person. They are there physically to tick the box so that when they go to the parole board, then they can be given a date because Bazot, okay, uh, based on your crime, you have done anger, you have done this, you have done that, we give you a date. But internally they are not transformed the anger is still there the in in and I remember the correctional service ainandaba mm. because guguwe bona mawubuya futhi bazokunikeza impahla bakunikeza sponge bakunikeza umcamelo bakunikeza amashiti bakuphakele futhi badile nawe decisively so you are wasting your time hence ubona labantu basembambeni labantu basembambeni most yabo they were youth they were vibrant. They were fresh during their time. But because they spend a lot of time in prison, because why? There will come a time where is Katis Appel. We live in time. And I cannot believe Guti. Just yesterday, I was 20 years, 21, 22. Today, I'm 31 in Valley Calendar. So it shows good time I melanga mund is katisia hamba. So I can de I cannot therefore good in looking yenza the very same things mbuela. Hey, I have a criminal record, I'm unemployable. But that does not mean agunama opportunity na If you don't find opportunity, you create them. In years, Yoguti, if you are persevering and persistent and enduring, and you have that vision, that purpose, that goal, that ambition, that drive, I can guarantee you, and God will bless you. The problem of us is that within the society as Pilaguyo, we have three types of people. Number one, five percent of them think, they use their mind, they think. 10% of those people think they think and the rest of them will die rather than thinking. So it's imperative good we develop a culture, a society, lay a user in mind. We start reasoning. I always hear ask a man Bozani school and good look. Ninum fanu zagwe hi nyaktanda all of the sudden so same pity in nine. Booz why untanda reason nye allow him to plead a logical case go umuzukuthi why why uthu yang tan do you know what is love Nina, you don't reason this is why this is what actually i'm teaching my daughter son at 2 years but nzamo ukuthi ngifuna ukumfundisa ukuthi reason not ukuthi eh ngim overcoming ngokumshaya ngifuna understand the yena akwazi ukudifferentiate between good and evil between right and wrong ukuthi no 
Why we are in two fundamentally? Because we are born to be wrong. I can be born initial because once you are strengthening his faculties so that aguas ukrisina the challenges na impacting ugoti that's why we are born to be. Agunam se be nzi. We are this culture and in kalugu unlula la quickly. When Mandela was released in prison in '94, that was the greatest. Uh, how can I? That was the greatest mess that I've seen. Not because Mandela was supposed to remain incarcerated, but the country immediately went into entitlement. We went into a dependent syndrome. Recently, during the political uh, uh, campaigns. I, I saw Untate, my money, uh, and, and Nabobani, they were busy campaigning in Jongo Baguzo Voti, Wagyo Salu Ramapos. There was a guy somewhere uh, at Teben or Gupang Sakumbuli was asked, Gula Masai was in Northwest, a TV by the reporter, Gutindota, uh, are you going to vote for ANC? And he was so bitter towards ANC, that guy. Say, yo, I guess I battle ANC. And the reporter asked, why is that only battle and you are going to vote for the other party? The guy shocked me by his response. And you know what? I've been waiting for ANC to build a house 20 years. And he was so adamant and passionate about it. 20 years. Now, question. What have you been doing the entire 20 years waiting for the government to come and spoon feed you? This is the culture we live in. Maunga Bega, I was driven by a guy from Zimbabwe, Ungtropela. I'm not saying the Zimbabweans are better than South Africans, but these guys, Mabafiga La, they know how to live life because they come from a country where nothing is for Mahala. It's tough. You understand? Tinala yonkin, tuimale kolo, yonkin to is for free. And uh, these things, it blind us and throw us into a dependent syndrome where we are just in jail. Hey, sfuna yonkin to genzelo. We can't collect a hundred rand. Sis valelama potholes. Sis yenzel. Learn to fix our own problems and not waiting for the government. But tina yonkin to my toilet government. Yonkin to the government owe us. Hence, see producer e culture nelisha elinganangondo abantu bakona when they receive the 350s you see them queuing in a liquor store and and ba jive agushawa mavosho this is the culture we are living in but you trace the damage is from the top the leaders because he will have a producer this type of people got abantu they must we must let this is I've learned. I'm not saying I'm better. I'm not saying uh, uh, excel. I'm learning on a daily basis. I don't have a family member. So it. Some of my family say, I don't bother anyone. There's no one. I take responsibility for a life. I'm, I'm not blaming. Yeah, I'm not yeah. Look, I remember a Vusi Tembegwa said something that baffled me. He says, look, he was talking, he says, your excuses are valid. Your excuses are valid, but they won't give you the desired result. Yeah. They are valid. Yes, it's a fact. Auna mama, it's a fact. You don't have inheritance. It's a fact. You don't have a startup to start a business. It's tough. They are valid. But in and of themselves, they don't give you a desired result. You have to choose. You choose progress or you choose emotion. You have to choose. It's your choice. So I've learned the tough way and I'm wishing and praying for people out there, Gutini. Take responsibility for your life. It's not over. I saw a lady, 67 years of age, graduating with a PhD. My God, I'm still only 31 years of age. I can still go and get my metric and go and reach PhD. As long as it's it's not over. I can do it again. Tabsa, thank you so much, man. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, and thank you, everyone, uh, who watched us. Uh, we really, really appreciate you being here, commenting on the content, liking the content, subscribing on the channel as well. Um, thank you so much for being here. Cool